Hi everybody, uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, excuse my oily face, I have like coconut oil all over me. So, um, I wanted to do a video and just share my thoughts on that great day that we read about in the scriptures. Um, that um, I think many understand that the great day of judgment is at our door. And um, I've been studying this topic as much as I can. And um, I just wanted to share um, what I've gathered. Because if you're following my blog and my studies in the Odes of Solomon, um, it really does help um, understanding this stuff. Because I've come to the conclusion that this great day of judgment, <coughs> or whatever, um, God, I don't believe God has it in the scriptures where, okay, we could just narrow it down to a couple scriptures and figure out what's going on. Um, it is a, a topic that is searchable, and I don't think anybody can master it. It is scattered throughout not only our entire Bible, but our, all around the other sacred texts as well. Um, key information is just scattered all over the place and some of it I believe is talking about multiple events at the same time so it's it's impossible to master this topic I don't think anybody could say I mean this is one of the greatest days in human history I don't think anyone will be able to say I know what's going to happen I, I have this figured out um, that's the conclusion I've I've come to and I've talked about that in my last article on the Odes of Solomon. I have been updating it. Uh, some people might want to check that out because I did find some pretty um, uh, amazing stuff. But I'm going to get into that. So we know now this gets into why people are arguing over pre and post trib rapture and stuff like that. And I don't have all the answers. Like I said, I don't believe anyone can have all the answers um, to this topic. And that just seems to be God's will. But um, I highly recommend. I understand the book of Enoch can be a stumbling block to people because the flat earth thing. Well, let the scriptures um, interpret the scriptures. And that's all I can say and pray about it. Um, the book of 2nd Baruch is also very key as well. It talks about um, this day, uh, talks about our redemption, talks about the times that are right at our door in great detail. And uh, yes, it is indeed backed up by scripture. Um, second Esther's as well, you can keep going. So um, it, it is important to read these books. Um, to, to really get an understanding of the truth. And let the scriptures interpret the scripture. I don't want to hear all oh, the apocrypha this. Let the scriptures interpret the scripture. Because um, a lot of these books. The scriptures are backed up by the Bible. So. <coughs> anyway. So this is what I've been able to gather. Um, we know we are at the time. And we are at the door of the great tribulation. And this day of judgment is going to usher in the great tribulation, uh, the wrath of God. Um, I believe times are just going to get harder and harder for the secular world. But I also believe that in these times of hardship, God is going to raise up the church. And it's time for the church to rise. And out of God's mercy, we can bring people to the cross and bring people to salvation. But through the softening of their hearts. You know, I believe this virus and stuff, you know, is just the beginning of sorrows. Um, it's going to be a crescendo out of, at, this is just what I believe. I'm not saying this is, okay. Um, I believe, I believe it's just going to be a crescendo of harder times. Eventually leading into that great day of judgment. And will he find faith on the earth when that, when he, before he comes in the clouds? Okay, yeah, I think it's going to be that bad, and and that that does bring up the pre-trib, post-trib rapture thing. So, um, again, I don't have, <coughs> I don't have all the answers, but I'm just going to share what I've been able to discern by studying for these past couple months. And um, 
it seems, yes, uh, the plague and pestilence, uh, famine is in the prophecies, what we see happening, starting to unfold. Um, this probably, I assume, will just be natural, everyday life. As things uh, progress in a downward spiral for the secular world, um, the prophecies are very clear that um, our country will probably be invaded um, I'm not going to say I ran by some kind of Islamic force. And um, and it makes sense because we are weakening. Um, here in New York City, you can really get a foothold because um, uh, the cops are out there, Secret Service, military, you know, it, terror alerts, stuff like that, because we are vulnerable. Um, you know, there's there's definitely a heavier presence. But... Um, but it is in the scriptures that the worst of the heathen will be coming after the heathen. Okay, we know this day of <coughs> we know this day of judgment is a recompense of the wicked, and if Satan will cast out Satan, so the house cannot stand. So God is going, you know, the Joel two army of uh, the Nephilim coming out of the pit and stuff like that. The worst of the heathen um, is going to uh, take out the heathen. And that's consistent throughout biblical history. God always uses um, uh, Satan's own people to destroy. You know, he uses them to they, they just destroy themselves. Uh, you can read about that in Leviticus, etc. Uh, so, I don't know how this stuff is going to go down. But I do believe we're going to withstand man's wrath and then... After man's wrath is God's wrath. Because I think whatever is going to happen, our country being invaded or some kind of outside force from the north is going to come into our country. Um, they're going to do their damage, but then God is going to uh, rebuke them. And he's going to defend um, our city, our towns, our country, uh, the Lord himself. Now, how this all is going to go down, I don't know. Um, but that's clear. Another clear thing is um, God will gather all of us. The entire body of Christ will be gathered in Jerusalem, Israel, whatever that means. Um, and I think that is the greater exodus of um, Isaiah 45. And please check out my latest study in the Odes of Solomon because I updated that. And um, it does unravel... It, it does reveal that the greater exodus will take place um, as a prelude to the great judgment because we know the entire body of Christ is going to be gathered around the heathen. And um, and a lot of crazy stuff is going to happen. The dead in Christ are going to rise, rise first. So we're going to be standing there with King David, with Moses, with Samson. It's going to be amazing. And we're going to be in our redeemed, glorified, light bodies. At the same time, the wicked, those who have chosen to go against God, are going to be in their unglorified dark bodies. And I've I found this very consistent. Um, the Book of Enoch blatantly talks about this. So does Second Baruch. But and then I'm once I read about it, I'm like, oh, now I'm seeing it all over in the in the Standard Bible as well. That as we get glorified in our light bodies, the heathen will be clothed with shame. So who knows? You know where there's where there should be hair, there'll be baldness, sweet smell, there, there'll be stink. Um, they're going, and they're not going to be very happy about the way they look and the way they smell, and they're going to be like that forever. And, um, and it seems that they're going to, the world is going to see how they're going to be before they are destroyed. Um, so that that's a, a spin that... Um, I don't think anybody talks about it. We talk about our glorified bodies, but the wicked were received an unglorified body, um, a, bo uh, a cloak of shame. And uh, it is all over the scriptures and uh, in our standard Bibles. Um, so that's interesting. Um, this is the day that the Messiah will be revealed. Um, I don't have all the answers, but... Um, I do believe that this is a separate event from when Christ walks on the earth on the Mount of Olives. 
with the 144,000. This is something I'm confused at. I believe there will be a gap of time of rest and Christ will return in the middle of the Great Tribulation at some point at the Mount of Olives and um, I believe the body of Christ will be given ruler and reign over a desolate land. So, um, after the wrath of God. <coughs> so, this brings into pre-post-trib rapture. How does this fit in? And I believe pre-trib rapture is a viable, um, a viable, uh, it's a viable term to use, but, um, like a lot of, when people fight about doctrines, it's only, we fight about doctrines because people use these terms loosely. And no, it doesn't mean that the entire church is going to be raptured. We're not going to see a thing. I don't believe that. I don't. I believe that the first fruits of the rapture, according to our worthiness um, and our holiness and our pureness and stuff, um, you know, I'm sure there might be a first round that will be called, that might not see anything. But I think what, from what I discern, I think we will be seeing things as we get raptured. You know, everyone's reading Psalm 91 uh, right now, and it's in Psalm 91. You know, 10,000 may fall at your side, and um, unless you dash your foot against the stone, his angels will take charge over you, etc. We're going to see stuff. The revelations I've got, Peter walking on the water is the rapture. Um, stuff like that. Um... I, you know, and the scriptures say, but will he find faith in the land? Will you have faith when you see everything um, falling apart around you in the worst way? Uh, will there be faith? Will we have faith that God will supernaturally uh, provide, protect, and take us out of there? Um, so, so it does discredit some of the pre-trib rapture ideas. Um, because I just feel like that term just gets loosely used but um i do believe we will have to see things um it's going to be the end of time it's going to be the end of our time in this flesh um of course there's going to be some type of grand finale you know it, it does make sense nobody wants to hear it i don't want to hear it you know but will will jesus find faith um will we have faith that uh jesus will protect us um you know so, that's pretty much what I've been able to gather on this great day. This is, this is just my opinion, um, but it is important to read the other texts. Um, there's so much text to read, but um, um, yeah, I just wanted to share this stuff. So, um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything I left out. Um, we're in for some amazing times. Uh, unprecedented times. Supernaturally unprecedented times. I mean, yeah, we say that now. But I mean, the greater exodus, um, the resurrection of the, <coughs> the resurrection of the dead in Christ, um, the gathering of the entire church, um, you know, I got words from the church in Times Square Church a couple months ago. You know, God said, we'll be dancing in the streets. And not this past night, but the past two nights, the Lord has been twice in my dream exclamating the Beach Boys song, Dance, Dance, Dance. I don't know what it means. I don't know. But I do think we'll be playing worship music. I do think, you know, the times that we're in right now, God is ushering the church to rise. So, I mean, me, I don't have fear of the coronavirus. I go out there. I'm in New York City. I go down the subways. Probably the worst place to go, but I don't know, whatever. I take precautions. You know, I wash my hands and stuff. But, um, and, and I do see, like, the other night, like, Times Square is a ghost town, but you see a couple soldiers in Christ just filled with joy. And I felt the same way. It was just like, yeah, man, like, you know, I don't know. Can't explain it. It's just like, it's time for us to rise up. Um, so, 
Um, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, yeah, and I do believe this stuff probably will last a long. Things will probably go in a down, downward spiral, but we will be uh, raised up and I don't know. I think you get my gist. I've already repeated myself. So, okay, guys, thanks for watching. God bless you.